Deep within the heart of the Yucatan jungle, shrouded in myth and legend, lies an ancient city that has captivated the imaginations of adventurers for centuries, and rivals the likes of Machu Picchu and the Great Wall of China. As one of the new seven wonders of the world, this site draws visitors from across the globe to marvel at its majesty. Today we'll wander through these ancient ruins to uncover tales of power, astrology and ceremonies from the world of the Mayans. And for those wanting to explore this place themselves, we'll share tips to help you make the most of your own journey into these ruins. Welcome, Welcome to Chichen Itza! There's all sorts of reasons someone might wake up at 5 a.m., but these days for us it usually means we're about to have some sort of great adventure. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's why last night we pick up the rental car and we're ready to hit the road. Yeah, it's waiting for us outside, so let's get going. Vámonos. airports to Chichen Itza, it will be Cancun or Merida. We could have done this whenever we were in Cancun, but it's a slightly uh, shorter road whenever we are over here in Merida. Yeah, from Cancun it's about two and a half hours, from Merida only two. And the good news is that this is our third time renting a car in Mexico. The first time we rented a car, we had a problem with Europe Car making us pay for the extra insurance even though our credit card covers it. But the most recent two times with budget, they have not pushed the insurance and have been totally polite when we said it's covered through our um, through our credit card. So that is one nice thing to know. I know you guys are, a lot of you guys watching from the US are very curious about that. So just so you know, the budget at the airport did not push anything at all. Before we knew it, we have arrived to Chichen Itza. After we parked, we follow the signs to the ticket booth. International visitors can expect to pay 614 pesos, while Mexican nationals enjoy a special rate of 272 pesos. One important thing to note is that the entrance fee is divided between two separate organizations. This means you'll need to visit two different booths to complete your payment. Next thing we knew, we were in. Our anticipation grew with every step, and then, as if by magic, Chichen Itza's most awe-inspiring monument emerged on the horizon. There it was, standing tall and proud against the backdrop of history. We had found El Castillo. also known as the Temple of Kokulkan, stands 98 feet tall and is a testament to the incredible astronomical knowledge of the ancient Maya. Built with nine platforms, the structure features 365 steps that represent the days of the year. During the spring and autumn equinoxes, the sun casts a shadow that creates the illusion of a serpent slithering down the steps, a sight that continues to draw countless visitors each year. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we made it. We made it over here. And if there is one recommendation that I can give to you guys, is arrive over here the earliest that you can. We left Merida at what time, Yamor? At six. Six, yep. Six, something. So it took two hours, so we arrived whenever they opened the doors. And uh, the sooner that you arrive, there's going to be two things that it's going to be good for you. It's not going to be as hot, and there's not going to be a lot of people because probably this is going to be very crowded. Oh yeah, but luckily the place is pretty big and there's a lot of things to see here. Obviously, this is the main attraction. So we grabbed our photos, classic Giuliano routine <laughs> style. And now we're going to take a look at some of the other spots. Sounds amazing. Another thing I noticed when we were coming in here is that there are tons of guides here that are going to ask you if you want to have a tour. So if you want that, great, tons of options. If you don't, just be persistent and saying no. Keep going through the ticket booth and you can also see everything on your own. Whenever you're around this pyramid, you're gonna see a lot of people clapping. It's very funny. Why? Because it makes a weird noise whenever you clap just in front of the stairs. It sounds like a little duck. Ah, this whole time I thought people were clapping because someone got engaged. <laughs> 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 
Try it. Wow, so talented. <laughs> Martin finished up his audition for Chitsen Itza's next percussion band, and we headed to our next important site, El Cenote Sagrado. This sacred well, once a hot spot for Mayan pilgrimages and sacrificial offerings, was where they tossed in shiny trinkets to appease the water gods. However, things took a bit of a twist when they later swapped shiny objects for human sacrifice. Warriors, children, and maidens were first treated to a luxurious steam bath or temescal before being thrown into the cenote's mysterious depths. Gazing upon the jade green waters and its enchanting aura, we were left to wonder about the spiritual and cultural importance it held for the ancient Maya, who believed it to be a doorway to the underworld. Now, if Yucatan is famous for one thing, it's definitely the cenotes. I mean, they're everywhere in the state. And one of the most important is this one that is the cenote sagrado. And it's right now, it looks like agua de chaya. It looks a little green. If you don't know what agua de chaya is, it's because you haven't seen that video that we say all the things that you have to try whenever you visit Merida. Yes, and like Martin kind of alluded to, you can't swim in this one, but there's actually quite a few outside of Chinese so that you could do after a long day of exploring the pyramids. That sounds like a good plan. Feeling the heat, we headed to our next spot, the ball court, the largest and most impressive in Mesoamerica. Along the way, we passed some bandli or skull platform. It is believed to have been used to display the skulls of sacrificial victims, warriors, and even defeated ball game players. The skulls carved into the side are a reminder of the Mayan belief in the cycle of life and a spiritual importance placed on sacrifice by the ancient civilization. To the naked eye, this place may just look like a bunch of walls around some grass, but something big happened here. That's right, this is a juego de pelota. If you're not from Mexico, probably you're not familiar with it, but this is an ancient, ancient sport that uh, they played over here and they hit a ball, pelota, with the hips or with the elbows, with the head, with the feet, and you have to cross the ball over that, that little hoop. Yep, a little hoop over there. Kind of like basketball, except the stakes were a lot higher in some cases. That's right, it could be sacrifices. <laughs> could be sacrifices, it's a little bit unclear, but uh, man, it's hard to believe that this is where that happened. All right, you ready to play ball? Estamos listos. But maybe playing ball wasn't your thing and you were a math nerd in high school like I was. Then head over to the other side of the temple, to the Plaza of a Thousand Columns. Now don't take the name too literally. If you count them, there's only 200. We'll tell you why in just a second. This area is an impressive forest of stone pillars that once supported a vast roof. While the structure's original purpose remains uncertain, it's believed to have been a meeting center. While there are only 200 columns present, the actual name of the thousand columns comes from the greatness it inspires. It is so crazy to be back here. I actually forgot to mention to you guys that I came here many, many years ago when I actually first started to learn Spanish in middle school. And let me tell you that coming here as a kid made such an impression on me. The minute I got back to school, I was bragging to the whole class as we'd see the pictures of this place in our textbook, being like, I was there, I was there. Little would little Juliana believe that not only would she go on to marry a Mexican, live in Mexico for three years, have this goal to see every state, but she would be making videos in English and Spanish, showing these places to people around the world those of which have even been shown in language classrooms. I've gotten many messages from teachers and that is full circle. So being here, wow, I didn't, those are, those are very deep memories I didn't expect to, to reflect this deeply on when I was here, but I just wanna say a huge thank you to every language teacher out there for sharing the beauty of the world and inspiring people through language. It makes such an impact on people. Thank you to my parents for raising me to always explore Mexico despite what the news may say. And thank you to each and every one of you who is following our journey, subscribing. It has made such an impact on us and we are so honored and humbled to be able to share corners of the world like this with you. Well, enough of that sentimental stroll down memory lane. Let's switch gears to some real talk, the souvenirs at Chitsun Itza. Spoiler alert, you might want to save your hard-earned cash for something else. One thing I noticed, and it's a shame, is the souvenirs that they sell over here, they, it's like generic Chinese souvenir that you can get 
anywhere in Mexico, but they are not even pretty. They sell like weird things over here. Uh, I recommend if you're staying either in Merida, go to a boutique with, with real artisans that they produce their own thing and you can have like a better quality and something nicer. Instead, today's souvenir is our memories here. So we found ourselves wandering back to El Castillo just to get one more look before heading to a different area of the grounds. Funny thing is I came over here with my family when I was a teenager and when, when that happened you were able to climb so we came over here very late they almost closed the park so we just enter and I just climbed that and I can see Whoa. we can see the entire jungle. You realize how lucky you are? Yes. Like you can't do that anymore nope. without don't, going to don't jail even after. Try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next we headed to the southern end of Chichen Itza to see our final few ruins. Here we found the Caracol, where the world's greatest astronomers studied the sun, moon, and planets, and Las Monjas, or the nunnery. While its true purpose is still debated, it's possible that its name is due to the fact that the buildings with numerous rooms reminded the Spaniards of their convents. Final stop, Las Monjas and La Iglesia. I don't know what it is about this place. Maybe it's the fact that the stairs kind of look like they're falling apart and there's this like little cave back there that I want to go into. But it really hits me here about how strange it must have been when people came across this place in the middle of the jungle. It's like your Indiana Jones or something. Wow. I'm so impressed by this area in particular. Most people are impressed by that El Castillo in the middle, but this part really is hitting me. And with all that exploring done, it was time to eat. Martin, your comparison to the cenote being similar to Agua de Chaya earlier surprisingly didn't deter me away from ordering this. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. This is the color that I told you guys about. After all that walking, nothing tastes better than an agua de chaya. You're right. Yes, yeah, so it's definitely, we're definitely on the hunt for some Yucateca food because what we were seeing in Chichen Itza, I saw chicken nuggets and chips and that is not at all what we're about. We wouldn't have the traditional food. Yeah, we are in one of the states, one of the best states to eat. It has some of the best dishes, so we have to take advantage of that. Just outside of the entrance to the parking area of Chichen Itza, there's tons of restaurants that have these dishes. We ordered a few of our favorites that we actually showed you guys in the uh, Yucatan food video that you can watch after this. This restaurant is called Las Mestizas, and we're ready to try good food. Oh yeah! Muchas gracias. amazing, the taste is good, but something that shocks me is the color, how colorful is all, all the food, so beautiful. This is Mexico, this is Mexican food, this is real Mexican food. Chichen Itza, it's only one of the beautiful places that the state of Yucatan has. Yeah, so keep watching because we have so many videos coming showing you guys more off the beaten path places in the Yucatan. We can't wait to share them so long. Travel well. And make the world your neighborhood. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.